The landscapes of our lives are for learning, where experience is our teacher. When we gather together to share our resources, we are destined to love and thrive. Hey, good morning, Maureen. Good morning, Pierre. Woo! <laughs> it's as if we just started talking. <laughs> It's as if, as we've if. been talking for an hour already, but now we're going to record a podcast. Right, right. Yeah. And um, the question somebody always asks, what are we talking about this morning? I think um, you wanted to talk about um, graphic novels and teaching. Uh, yeah, something like that. Teaching graphic novels. Yeah, I wanted to, I, I asked you if we could talk about what I learned from teaching graphic novels um can I set this up just a moment sure um yeah Maureen wrote a book about graphic novels and Maureen um is a teacher but was a teacher professionally in high school teaching English and um and then wrote this book about graphic novels and um went on a lecture tour uh explaining the role of graphic novels and learning and um now I'm going to get to hear a little bit about it because I I mean what I said is as much as I know about that about that whole subject so so lay it on me yeah well I'll just I'll just um say that I it, I people always got confused they're like you wrote a graphic novel I was like no <laughs> I wrote a book <laughs> about teaching graphic novels specifically how to teach graphic novels in the English language arts high school level classroom. Okay. To students, to people. Um, and so, yeah, I, it was. So for those, who, those who might not know, what is a graphic novel? A graphic novels, a graphic novel is a, is a um, novel length um, story written in the comics medium. Now, okay. what the hell does that mean? Quickly. Comics is a medium. People think, oh, you hear the word comics, you think comic book is a comic book. It's superheroes and it's colorful and it's, you know, for stupid people and, you know, that kind of thing. Or like the Comic-Con thing, right? Like that's what people typically think of. But comics is a medium of communication. And okay. so you can learn more about that if you like. But that that's basically what I explain. One of the things I explain in teaching graphic novels um, in my book um, which is called the Graphic Novel Classroom, Powerful Teaching with Learning and Images. I wrote it in 2010, and it was published in 2011 by Corwin Press. So uh, that's one of the, for chapter one is like, what are comics? What is comics? And it's, it is singular, comics, plural, it's because it's a medium. So it. it's not a genre of literature. It's a medium of communication. Um, and so I taught both, the medium and how it works, um, kind of the nuts and bolts and how to construct a, a comic or a graphic novel length story mm -hmm. using images in sequence, in deliberate sequence. That's part of the definition. But also um, the story itself, the content of stories, like you would teach any other story, right? Well, Theme, character is all of that. Mm -hmm. So I did both form and content. And what kids really liked was the form because it's the how the story is assembled in a specific way and it's pretty fascinating because it's very interactive which is the interactive piece is the piece i wanted to start with today talking to you okay about. all right, right. any questions so far <laughs> um no just a couple of comments um that was great information and uh also you know pegging you know, who published it and when it was written and things like that. So this interactive piece, what, 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 you know, I mean, is that just looking at pictures? What's going on there? Yeah. Well, you know how the, there's the saying pictures uh, have a thousand words or whatever. What is yeah. That? One picture is worth a thousand worth words. A thousand we, words got it. It. we got it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that just means that they're, they're open to interpretation. There's a lot of meaning packed into an image, which is, very quick and visceral, like it's visual, right? Like you look right. at an image, it has an impact on your on your body, your brain, your eyes, and, right. and it's like instantaneous kind of meaning making. Right. But there's a lot there, right? And so yeah. 
deconstruct how you read images. Okay, what are you actually looking at? You're looking at lines. You're looking at space, an absence of lines. You're looking at color. You're looking at where a grouping of lines and space and color is in context with other images and space and lines. And then you flip a page and it's in a bigger context. So there's just a lot that are we're processing as we're reading. The interesting part and the part that led me to become a psychotherapist, okay? Oh my gosh. Because yeah. this is how I got from teaching graphic novels and deconstructing images to doing what I do now, which is psychotherapy focused on embodied learning in the nervous system, right? Okay. So we bring ourselves to bear on what we see and interpret right, right. our whole right. life story our whole conditioning our whole yeah, how we how people read things and see things differently depending on their experience is that what you're saying yes okay. yes exactly and so knowing that as a teacher okay um and say i'm trying to teach my students um how to come up with a thesis statement and then write an essay with supporting evidence, you know, make an argument, you know, persuasive right. argument or have something to say and prove it. Right. So a lot of what we did was, you know, I would have kids defend their interpretation of what they were seeing. And, and a lot of times there is competing interpretations of images because we all see things slightly differently because of what we bring to bear on what we see. So for instance, mm -hmm. I'll give you a quick example. Um, we were reading a certain graphic novel and there it was in black and white and the images were kind of grainy and you couldn't, there wasn't a lot of detail. Mm. And so one student said, oh, well, that was a ship. It was a, an image of a ship. That was the Lusitania. Um, mm -hmm. and another student said, no, it's the, what's the, um, the tight, that's the Titanic. Oh, right. And so they, and, and so instead of me <clears throat> telling them what the right answer was and kids right. always want to know what's the right answer. What does the teacher want me to know? So I get the A. Right. I, I wouldn't say what the answer was. I said, I don't have the answers. And this mm -hmm. isn't about getting an A. This is about interpreting what you're seeing. And then if you run into the problem with someone else isn't seeing it the same way you are, okay, how do we negotiate the meaning of what is there? What are we seeing? And can we come to some sort of an agreement? It It's not so much about who's right and who's wrong. Um, it could be, it can be like, well, you could make an argument that, well, the Titanic had two smokestacks and the other uh, Lusitania didn't. And so you mm -hmm. could prove your argument. But the point being, Titanic had have, four, might have had five. Have, I'm not sure. We have people in a group, right? Learning through conversation. And what does that take from their nervous system? <laughs> they have to be calm enough attentive enough to to listen to the other person to try to get in the other person's shoes and see how they're seeing it so there's empathy there right right, right. and you've got to be willing and open and calm enough and feel safe enough to be able to let me see if i can try to see it from the other person's point of view or Maybe I am wrong. Maybe I misinterpret it. Let me look at that image again. Let me let me go through my thought process and see if I made a mistake or or can I assert something that will, you know, convince this person to see it my way. Right? That so takes a me, tremendous amount of regulation <laughs> to right. do that. So let let me kind of pull a thread through this. Yeah you've got yourself as an English teacher in high school, and I'm remembering back, and instead of reading like lines that are little tiny A's and B's and T's and C's in a text, um, you're now looking at some pictures which uh, 
allow for more interpretation, even to the extent that it's a fuzzy picture. And so it opens up the classroom and the learning experience to negotiation and conversation. And you, as an English teacher, see how that requires human social psychological skills and like now you're like monster psychologist person <laughs> is that right yes and i i just upon reflection you know at the time when i was doing this with kids you know right. i was really trying to think about my role and my frustration was Students would come into my classroom. I taught seniors. So they're at the end of their academic career. They've already been conditioned <laughs> by well, let me Let me just translate that. They are checked out. I was a senior in high school. Oh, yeah. I have a picture of me as a senior in high school. And basically, you know, uh, you didn't even really, you know, say, hey, hey, Mr. You know, so-and-so. Hey, Miss Vegas, how are you yeah. doing today? You know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, okay, I got it. Well, yeah, that, there was that. But my my point in saying they were they were 17 and 18 years old and they had already been conditioned by the schooling process where okay. you okay. come in, the teacher makes demands upon you because you need a grade to get whatever you need and your parents want you to get the grades. And so right. you jump You're through making hoops. a more serious point. Yes. Carrot, okay. Carrots and sticks. You jump through hoops. You do what you're told, you read this, you spit back the information, you get your grade, you go, you go to Harvard, right? Right. So I, they were always looking for what's the right answer. They were trying to pick my brain. What does she want us to say? Right. I'm like, you're not monkeys and I'm not going, you know what I mean? So I, right. had, I, me particularly, and I don't know of other teachers, I'm sure there's teachers just like me too, but more subversive with the way I teach is like, I'm not going, I, this isn't about getting the answers. This is about what you think, how you think, you must why you been think what you, you think. You must have been popular. Oh, not. Yeah. Well, so ironically, I was an easy grader, but the class was hard because I forced kids to think for themselves and uh -huh. to really negotiate meaning with their peers with me not as not so much as a referee but but kind of just trying to teach them about the process of what they were doing social negotiation of meaning making meaning together with other people for themselves and in a group and trying to make that also part of the learning that's the meta learning is this is do. this is what we're doing it's not oh i want you to understand what that image is and i want you to right. and get the story right Right. I want you to understand the process of how we arrive at meaning together in a society, in a group. Well, I know you're not going to say this, and, and I'm just going to speculate, but I more seriously am remembering back to my senior year in high school. And my speculation is that you were an amazing, mind-blowing teacher because... <laughs> because I had a um, humanities teacher, Mr. Noble, look at this, I can even remember his name. And humanities wasn't necessarily a subject taught in high school, but it was in the one that I went to. And at Mr. Noble, um, great name, you know, sort of carried on the noble idea that um we need to learn about how we get along and how there's different societies and culture and 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 some of these you know human societal things and there was introspection and like you know you weren't just learning like you said to get ahead and go to school and, and all the rest of that, you were doing some introspection on yourself and society and other cultures and that's philosophies and just a whole lot of different that's, that's things coming into your head. And it just was like, wow, everybody loves this guy. Yeah. yeah. Well, because the class became about you because you're human and, and every, if you're teaching a true humanities class, like you're, you're describing it, 
you are teaching people about who they are, like as human beings. It's about human nature, right? So and 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 I never so thought it's it always way. about you. I always tell kids, I'm like, you're gonna love this class. It's all about you. You're you're so self-involved. You're a teenager. It's all about you and your identity. You're gonna love this because it's all about you. And I want to know what you think. You, who okay. are you? What do you think? That's the question, right? Know thyself since the beginning. Right. Right. Yeah. So so I used to joke with them and say, you know, I don't don't tell me what you think I want to know. I already know what I know. <laughs> I want to know what you know. I want to know what you think or you don't know yet, you know. And so you must have, you, must have, you know, turned those little brains oh, it pissed, pretzels. It pissed, them, yeah. it, it pissed them off. <laughs> yeah. But they had no choice but to kind of like go along. You know, it's That's like this is thing. the environment, guys. Sorry. I know it's not like last year, but. So w did you actually see or, um, you know, sense that, uh, you know, this this regulatory function was something that you, was it something like you wanted to contribute to or you wanted to learn more about? How did you sort of move into that space? Um. Well, I just really, hold on. I'm going to let my dog out. Sorry. Mm -hmm. um, no, I guess, I guess it's, I'm kind of not going to answer your question. I'm going to kind of answer it in a roundabout way. I think in the recent years where all of this um, words you can say and words you can't say in classrooms now and the free speech debates and who's led on to campus to speak and not and, you know, the culture wars and all this stuff that's going on in universities. Mm -hmm. You know, as a teacher, I just would come back to teaching graphic novels and allowing I had to stay regulated enough to allow the kids to to fight and to and to argue their point and to get at get at each other a little bit and and work that through and learn that this this is how we do we're animals and you know and pointing you know pointing out to kids like that whole thing about okay you you need to have the facts you need to go back and get evidence from the text to make your argument and in all of that critical thinking is great and but also you're you're two people and you know listening to other person and you, arguing ideas and not hating the person right and not it's not about the person's identity it's about the exchange of information and ideas and to not take things personally, right? Mm -hmm. And to to like as as emotional and as uh, worked up as people get about their opinions about things and how they see things, and their perceptions and what they think is true and right, all good, all good. And when you put mm -hmm. it together and you clash, that's all good too. That's mm -hmm. that's just how it goes. And I mm -hmm. I think that when you try to and people get hurt. Okay. People get hurt in that process mm -hmm. verbally, you know, ki kids, teenagers, I mean, yeah. for a number of reasons why they might well, be dysregulated, well, me... they, they say things, they, they, they don't have the life experience and the knowledge. They don't have the language yet sometimes to say just the right thing. And they, they right. do offend each other and that right. happens. And I guess my frustration was this whole feeling offended and hurt feelings and, and such, and like, you can't say certain things and and then the Maybe teacher a, is supposed to be the authority that that jumps in and prevents that from happening you create a safe space environment well that will never happen you know kids will not injure each other verbally that that should not happen in your classroom and in your space that that's that's not learning that that's the opposite of what the learning process is and i think Good, with wow, good intention, pe deep. people want to protect people and and hurt. That no one wants anybody right. to get hurt. Okay, me right. included. Right. But they have to realize that that exposure to a little bit of hurt is how we grow, and and it and it can't be any other way. It can't. Right. We have to make mistakes and be. It's me it's messy. It's ugly. Right. Right. But you well, as the teacher have to be cognizant enough and calm enough to realize what's happening and how to model and and help kids learn this process for life. Yeah. So, yeah, well, that got deep in a hurry. Mm -hmm. um, 
And and I'm glad it did. I mean, I I I, I agree with you. And uh, the the thought that I am having is, you know, how passionate I was about um, my own feelings um, and thoughts and arguments as you know a teenager and probably most of my life. Yeah. And how now in uh, through a lot of work, meditation, yoga, I begin to understand, you know, we'll go back to know thyself, you know, what, what is myself? You know, who am I? Am I really anything other than a speck and one of, you know, I don't know how many billion people on the planet and what all these opinions are going to like, you know, have this, you know, is that, is that really how this is all going to go down? Or is it more like, um, you know, Sam Harris's view of meditation where, and, and virtually, you know, most of some advanced thinking is there's, um, well, let me put it this way. It was very late in life and relatively recently that I reflected on what thoughts actually are and what they do to me. Mm. Um, you know, they, I don't like <laughs> the that's word. a profound statement right there. <laughs> I mean, that's my job now, right? Like you say it again. Okay. It's only recently that I reflected on what thoughts are and what they do to me. And um, I don't enjoy the word trigger, but I have to um, <laughs> allow that it has a lot of application mm -hmm. and they, you know, can thoughts can um, energize me emotionally in a positive or in a negative way. And the amazing thing about it uh, that really crystallized, you know, sort of the next level of thinking on this is, <laughs> I'm going to say this, and it's just, it's just hilarious. And maybe you'll think it's profound too. These thoughts, they just come and go. I mean, <laughs> they just like come and go. Yeah, and when I well, really meditate yeah. on that, on the nature of how ephemeral they are, um, and, and it's not because I'm a wishy-washy person. That's not really what I'm saying here. They, 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 they arise and then they, they, they kind of go away. And to let them um, take charge, like they would in a classroom in high school. And you know, maybe I, you know, I don't know that I would scream, but you know, I'd be passionate. Well, um, yeah, the, and you attach your identity to them. You think you're 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 so invested in what you think and how you feel, and those right. two things are related. It becomes this is me, and I and I will die on this hill because it's me. You know, like I will fight, I will fight for this idea because it's me. It's life or death. Like that. That's how important it is when you attach to your thoughts and you think you're them your identity becomes what you think, right? Dude, you're screwed. So right. no, you know, I don't know. If yeah, the no, the separation, stuff. this, the separation and, and then it becomes a bit of my daily meditation process to exercise that um, direction in, uh, I don't know if it's thinking, but um, I, I, I love some Awareness. of the new, some of the new meditation work actually um you know um experiencing and um and you know it's not thinking it's it's just a bigger it's just a bigger thing like that mm -hmm. you can almost accept it it's just like it is and so you accept it you don't actually have to think your way through it um cs lewis talks about it in his conversion as well it's like a, you don't you know a, you get to a point where it's just like an experiential joy and you just recognize yourself to be in this. Yeah. It's is, it's isness. It's just 
it is it's being it's isness it's isness you're right 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 so maybe on isness we should um do a little do a little rap um wow yeah well i'm just gonna i'm just gonna add one more one more thing you said about like when you it's it's and that's why we've been talking i think about meditation and yoga so much too is when you when you attach so strongly to say that's the titanic (laughs) um (laughs) and you know and it becomes that that thought that's just energy okay becomes um, it, it impacts it creates emotion you get attached you cling on to that and then you get tight right and you it has to be this way i have to be right for whatever reasons got you to right. that point right, okay right. just picture that kid trying to make that argument like no right. it's the way i see it right and the fist right like your energetic being this is embodied process and um you're in direct contact with other people and other bodies right Right. including the teachers and uh within that context which is nested in a lot of other contexts but that if you're over identifying and 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 there's nothing wrong with being passionate and energetic about your beliefs but if you think you're them you're less likely to question them to go back and say maybe i'm wrong um maybe other people know something i don't maybe I need more information so I can revise my thinking and you're less likely to listen because you're so tightly attached to your. I want to, I want to, I want to just put that in a frame and hold it um, for a moment and, and, and come back to it actually. And when we say goodbye and say hello again in about two minutes, (laughs) okay. Okay. Um, Which is, which is that you're less likely to, um, you know, be able to question and open yourself up to receive the other side of the other side of the story, and uh, and we can talk about that um, next podcast. But thank you for um, a lesson in how to learn about graphic novels, and I think you called it like embodied learning because it's not like the little X's and O's on a. a yeah, well, the embodied learning part is the is the you know the social negotiation of meaning, and and I always said I teach people not not books and not story, you know, not the content necessarily. I'm mm-hmm. teaching. What did you call it? Happens the so- in the person. It's it's yeah. learning is part of what did you call it? The social something of an social negotiation of meaning. Social negotiation of meaning. Cool. Which is what we're doing all the time. Right. So, it's not just in a high school classroom over a comic book. And people used to, you know, my fellow colleagues would say, oh, you're teaching the cartoons again. And, you know, we were doing something way bigger than that. And I think yeah. way more valuable. And I, I know, obviously, I'm proud of what I did. And I can see now as a having become a yoga teacher at the same time and later and then. Right getting right. into meditation and then becoming a psychotherapist looking back and I'm like damn like I was onto something there like that yeah. that was the more important lesson <clears throat> and I think that teachers need to be trained better in understanding pe- people like the 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 nervous system regulation piece and all of that for themselves yeah. and for their students to create create healthier environments where where you can you can flourish and not not kind of uh, adhere to policies that are built on fear of hurt feelings and that kind of yeah. stuff yeah yeah well, thank you maureen i really appreciate that thanks and for indulging me for letting me talk about that absolutely no it was it was, it was great so <clears throat> so we have our outros and i'm pierre from yoga heels and and Ma- maureen landscapes for learning learn to live, live to learn. And for me, it's um, peace through grace. And, you know, I know you've enjoyed the peace through grace, but your enjoyment of it and my repeating it all the time. And I sign off a lot of um, emails with it, especially around we're in the holiday season talking. I just, I just, 
I just get so grounded in that in that phrase and how like I don't know it just it just kind of sends me off on a cloud so Words here I go purple. off on a cloud peace through grace Marie. Mm-hmm.